All right, so today we're starting a retaining wall. And here's some tricks and tips that we do when we start building. First and foremost, we had clay and water in the bottom. So we do soil stabilization with type S. It changes the chemical composition of the soil and hardens it up, dries it out basically. Then what we do is we install geotextile fabric. This is not your typical weed fabric. This is by weave heavy duty. What this does is it prevents stone migration, meaning the stone going into the dirt, but it also acts as a filter for the dirt behind it going through the wall. It also bridges gaps. So when this is taut like this with the stone on top of it, if there's any imperfections in the soil underneath, it bridges that gap. Then if you come in here and look at this, this is three quarter clean stone. So this is what we use for our foundation. We go down every two or three inches and then tamp it. We have a machine, but for you guys, if you just want to use a hand tamper, this will work great. Once we build the foundation, then we use fines or three eighths. This is what we use to make it perfectly level and we can adjust our blocks based off of that. Tamp the soil, install the geo fabric, then install your three quarter, tamp that down every two or three inches and then install your three A's. Then now you're ready to start laying blocks. We use a dead blow hammer to fine tune it and a torpedo level. So this right here is called a transit. What it does is it self levels, it spins around a laser and it gives me different points. Around a circle like this, it's great because I can make sure that the left side and the right side are exactly the same. You're not gonna be able to do that with a level. Once you start laying your blocks, we only use XP. This glue is phenomenal. What it does is basically once it sets up, it will never come undone. The only way to do it is actually it will break the block. So the block will break before this glue will come undone. We have a big demo saw to cut the stones, but if you don't, I don't recommend this, but you can do this. This is just a simple grinder with a diamond tip laid on it. For our demo saw, this is a 14 inch, so you can see the size comparison. So this basically will cut through any type of wall, any type of pavers, but it's got to be diamond. Then for beginners, if your wall is not perfectly level, this will basically fine tune and adjust the top of it. So if you have one block higher than another, you can use this on your grinder and make it level. Sod staples. So we use these to help hold the fabric in place while we're setting up. Obviously, once the stone's in, weighs it down, it won't blow away, but these are a cheap, easy alternative to prevent headaches. Figured I'd give some pointers of how I do it. There's a couple ways. This wall is all twists and turns and ups and downs, so it's a stair effect, so doing it this way really doesn't work. So what we do is typically, if we're doing like a straight wall, is we put down two one-inch gas pipes, um, obviously not PVC, this is just for demonstration purposes. And then we put the 3 8 around it and use like a straight edge or a level or a two by four and screed it. And that way you don't have to do what I'm about to do. But in this application, it's not really feasible. So what we do is I use a level, make sure it's close enough. And then I have a little trowel, my dead blow and a brush. So I kind of just throw some 3 8 around, grab a block, and bang it down. What that's doing is basically tamping it. Then I grab my level, and as you can see, it's very wobbly, so that means it's low. Take it out, throw a little more 3 8 in there to build it up. Now, the other thing is it's a hot day today, so you can see it's starting to dry out. We always keep a hose right next to us to keep it wet. Um, it helps with the compaction. So, I don't get underneath the level. So if you see this gap, that's not good. Even though the bubble's dead on, you can see the gap underneath there. So that means that this corner is too high. And 
now there's no gap and the bubble's still dead on. And then now you just move to the next one and the next one. So you wanna make sure that it's level, both side to side and front to back. side of this walkway and I want these caps to be level with these caps. Unfortunately if you look down there the walkway drops so we need to start building the wall all the way down there. To make it level I'll show you how to do that. And there. Anyway that defies. So what I'm going to do is come over here and find the height here. 11 and 3 quarters inches so that tells me I need to raise this block up a quarter of an inch you make sure whatever the height of this is is divisible by three carry it around that way the bottom wall is level and then obviously the caps go right on top so we'll be able to put a level across and show you that when we're done stairs or tiers, whatever you want to call it. So this is the cap. So that covers that end. Then the next one goes up like that. And if you look in this side here, you can see how you can see the line and it's really not attractive. So what we need to do is essentially create what I call a face. So this rugged edge along here. And I'll show you how to do it. So most manufacturers, when you buy a pallet, sell end blocks. So this is Cambridge matrix wall. So as you can see, there's two grooves in the back. Essentially what that's for is deciding if you want a longer one or a smaller one. If you're going up multiple levels, you want to alternate so that the seams don't line up. So all I use is a flat chisel and a hammer. So the first thing I do is just by eye kind of mark the top of the block so I know where I'm hitting on this side because this side doesn't have corresponding lines like that one. So I take this, 
wear your eye protection because pieces fly up. And just do a nice little hit all the way down that groove. One on the corner, one on the corner. A little bit over, one on the corner. And this time I kind of go on an uh, angle. And now, so we have three sides, face, face, and face. Before we obviously had this, with this ugly group, that's out of here. Now, we put this beautiful face and the next cap right on top. Now, caps are interesting because some guys leave it like this, but other guys put faces on these as well. I put faces on these. So we'll do the same process that we did on this block, on this one. So I'm cutting the caps today and I want to show you a little trick. So I usually do anywhere from like an inch and a half to a two inch overhang. So what you want to do is line up the back. Well, this is for like a curve like this. If it's the other way, you would line up the front. So it's just the direct opposite. So I'm about two inches right there. So obviously we need to cut these to fill this void. So what I do is I bring little shims or whatever. This is cut an inch, three inches, two inches, whatever. So the easiest way to do is basically line it up. It needs to be bigger than this gap. So right here we have four inches. I have a little mark in the center. So you put the mark in the center back here and then line this up in the front here. So it's equal distance. And then you just hold it in place, mark that side, mark that side. So now what we know is we're gonna cut this off and cut this off. So the biggest thing is, is you want to make sure it's nice and tight there, but on the face, you want to make sure you do a nice 90 degree cut. Sometimes guys do it on an angle or whatever, so, um, and then just repeat the process all over again. So you get the next one, line up the backs, make sure you're an inch and a half over here, and keep going. Right here, I have a bad cut. If you look on top, you can see it's touching here and a gap here. So the way I fix that is I leave it right in place. I put another block right next to it so it doesn't go anywhere. And I actually cut it in place. So I'll show you how I do it. Make sure you have your mask on. 